guys, welcome back to TSBEC TV. Earlier this year, we fitted a steering guard to my Defender 90 from an up and coming company called ORE, or Oak, yeah, there you go, Oak Ridge Engineering. And they've just launched their second product, which is this spare wheel carrier, swing away spare wheel carrier. So that is what we're going to be fitting today. And here we have the box. Um, that is the instructions, so we'll just, we don't need instructions, we'll just uh, break it and then figure it out. We have some cardboard, we have some more cardboard. What do you have, Russell? You have some cardboard. More. <gasps> we have one more bag. Do you remember what happened last time, guys? Nissa? Yeah, I remember, I sniffed it. This is creepy, but... It smells like... It smells like rubber. It smells like fret new tires. That's what it smells like. So, if you didn't know, in every ORE product, each bag of bolts is scented Ooh. with a mystery scent. <laughs> <laughs> and last time, Nissa claimed it smelled like harvest. And this time, I think it smells like fresh tires. Fresh tires. But no, anyway, uh, jokes aside, that's a really nice touch that the, the bolts come in yeah. this little sack. Uh, we love sniffing sacks here on TSPEC TV. Don't quote me on that. Oh. Um, and then we have the... Oh, is that two pieces? Oh, no, that's one, no, it's just... Yeah. There, we have the bulk. That's heavy. We have the bulk of the item. That is the actual um, carry bit thing. Overall, the advantage of having a, a spare wheel carrier or a swing away carrier like this is that all of the um, force is basically being carried through this rather than the door. Because uh, normally on a Land Rover, you just mount the wheel on the door. Um, which long term is not good because it puts a lot of strain on the door, on the hinges and so on. Uh, and my Defender has had that, but we're going to be removing that and replacing it with this uh, to support the spare wheel on the back door instead. Um, so with that sorted, I think it's about time we got into what we need to do to get this on there. So first step of getting the new wheel carry on is that we need to access to the back plate here. Uh, oh, there's, that means we have to take the door card off so we can get to the mounting holes which are right here in the back. Uh, it's quite easy to just take off all the screws, everything that holds it in, take it out, put it away, and then we'll move on to the next step. So now we've got all the screws out, and it's holding in in all the corners. We're going to use this little fork here. You can also just use a flathead screwdriver, but these ones are quite good at getting the trim off. Just slide it in on each side of the clip, and then it just comes out like that. And then you're just going to work your way all the way around to get all of them out. So now we've got the door trim off. You've got the different uh, clip holes here you need to undo. There's one there, one there, one there, uh, which you simply just put in and then ply them open. What we can see from the door here itself is that it's still quite solid. We've got a tiny bit of surface rust down here, uh, but there's no holes in it. And I don't think we will be able to poke any holes with a screwdriver, which is good. Uh, so it is solid all the way underneath here, but it definitely needs a bit of a care now. We got it all off. What we also found here is a crack at the bottom bit here, which also goes up here. But the crack continues. Uh, well, there was a crack here and a crack here, and these ones are probably due to the weight of the wheel that have been onto the back, which simply just pulls uh, the door apart pretty much. If you go over a bump or anything, uh, that can cause it. So we might see if we can weld this bit here, just to get a bit of strength back in it. But from now on, uh, the door won't be weighing any more than it is right now because of the new wheel carrier. Uh, so the damage has been done, but it's not going to get any worse right now. I'm just going to prep it and make sure it doesn't uh, rust anything. Take off the back plating here, which then uh, converts into the, the rear plating where the wheel carrier sits on which is holding by these small 10 mil bolts all the way around. Take those off and we should be able to separate the two. Uh, and therefore we can start putting things back together. So now we got the bolts off here. Uh, before we can get it off, we realize that this plate is gonna go over the studs to come out. And of course we've got these ones on here and they are rather rusty. So we're gonna put in four of the small the bolts here again, just to make sure the plate doesn't completely rip the door apart when we use the air gun to get them off. Hmm. 
So you may remember a few months ago, we discovered that we could get rid of all this oxidization or whatever it is with some simple scratch remover. Um, so, and actually, uh, that's a good point. You can see here and here, you can see where we've actually done that as an example. So, I mean, it's dusty now because it's summer, um, but that is what it sort, should sort of look like, not this white, horrible stuff. Um, so now that we've got all of this off and we're about to cover it all up again with another wheel carrier, I'm gonna polish the back door up so it looks nice and get rid of all this crap that is on there now with some simple turtle wax scratch remover and a towel. So now we're done polishing the door, which took about half an hour. So now we're gonna spend another half an hour putting the actual wheel carrier on. Uh, first fit is putting this plate back on, uh, which is uh, like each part or like part of the build. I've got a small drug bag with uh, all the bolts and nuts you need for it. Uh, this one needs uh, eight bolts, which you opened is in the back. This one then gets placed over here. Like that, and go straight through, and of course we don't need any backing plate onto it because this part here is not going to carry any weight whatsoever. Uh, so this one just needs to get fixed on here, loosely first, because you can see we can adjust it up and down uh, because each Land Rover, each Defender is a bit different. Uh, so we're going to put this one on loosely so we can move it up and down. That should be the first step. Mm. Alright, so next. Part of the job is putting the actual carrier, the arm itself. Uh, and as Liam said, this one goes down and sits directly onto the cross member, which we just replaced so we know, know it's not gonna fall off because of the rust. Uh, and this is where it becomes quite a lot smarter compared to other holders, especially one that already was on there, which kind of puts all the force on these three inches here, and these are not made for that kind of uh, force put onto it. Uh, where well now we're going to put it through the cross member, which means we've got a lot more strength, which means that these ones will not wear down. Uh, so in order to put this on, we've got a plate here for the back. Gonna, if you can see, it kind of says like that, like that, on the back side of it. So we're going to take it in here. Good thing to give the vehicle a good clean before you do this. So that one goes in there, and right now it's quite nice to have two hands. Then we're going to take this bit here, the main arm, which are going to be sitting out there onto it. So we're going to do that now. So on the older models here, we are now behind the V8, which is from 87, I think, uh, where you've got these kind of tabs here onto the crossman, which are welded down here. If you've got these ones, you need to have an extra plate called the Packer plate which then kind of corners out this piece so it sits flush with the cross member it kind of leaves that pin uh, the bit out so we need to make sure that yours is a new or the old version of the rear cross member to get the proper plating for it yeah and that plate should be included with the kit yeah. as well uh, and basically anything TD5 or onwards uh, will will not need it we'll just have the setup I have and actually mine is 99 so mine is the very first of the the age that you can have that setup Now we've got the arm on here. Again, we've got some adjusting slag on the brackets, which means we can adjust it. And the manual says you need to get these ones pointing to the right, which means the whole thing here you needs to pull towards yourself. So you get like this little hole here on the left of it. And that's just for like starting adjusting it. The next stop will be putting this bump stub in, which will be kind of like taking all the vibrations through the wheel. And this got two uh, nuts here, a nylon one and a standard one which is for adjusting it uh, and we get back to that when we start adjusting everything but this one just goes onto this hole right here just like that and then when that closes it makes contact with the door after that we'll put the uh, pin that goes in between here a little linkage that we can adjust in the, the spaces and after that comes all the adjustments of it which you want to get right and of course after you're driven a bit this rubber thing is gonna get moved a bit about, so you want to, after a couple, like a month or so, go out and readjust to make sure everything sits where it should be. Uh, but now this one goes on. And again, everything just goes on loosely for the first time, so we can adjust it, like that. That goes in here, onto that bit. 
And now we're gonna get this thing on, which is in the workshop, I think. Ta-da! This little thing, and in the first bag I opened, we also got the nuts for it. And the washers. Very nice. I think we can tighten these two up because it's in here. We're going to do the adjusting of it. So we finally got it on. Uh, we had a bit of problems getting it, everything adjusted correctly, uh, and we couldn't really film doing that part. Is rather want to get it working and understand the system, and then I can explain to you what you need to look out for when you do it. So first of all, the problem we had was that this rubber stop a buffer thing here needs to go in and make contact to it when you open the door about two centimeters like that it should be touching it and then when you close it completely it should be compressing so you don't get any movement in it uh, compared to if you have it open like that so you can hear that close it you don't have it uh, so what we found out was when we took that all the way out we were running out of thread on the rubber uh, and the nylon lock on the back so it wasn't actually locking anything and then every time we opened it like that this bit here the rubber stopper would start rubbing onto the bracket itself uh, and right there as you see right now it's just about yeah. brushing it actually it's not touching it from what i can see but it's really really close to doing it uh, and what we then did was we took this bracket down here and move it as far as we could to the right. So you loosen up all the bolts again, moved it to the right, and then we made this bit here, the linkage, uh, shorter, and that way we're pulling the whole thing closer to the door, and that way we can get more thread out of the rubber stopper here. Uh, so if you have the same problem with running out of thread on this bit here, you need to take this bit further back, so you clear the bracket here, and then you tighten us this uh, this linkage to get the whole assembly closer to the door uh, and that way was what we experienced and then we of course we put this bit on here which is like quite clever system uh, where you got different options compared to how big or fat a tire you got uh, so you could probably put 35s on here 37s even just pull it one way out and put these ones you remove these ones here all of them, pull it out and then put them back into the holes and that way you got a bit of adjustment onto it. Uh, but yeah, it was a bit complicated but if I were to do this once again I would have done it a lot quicker uh, compared to now. Uh, but that is about it, so it's quite well. Of course you have to readjust after you have some weight on it from a tire or something and this rubber stuff here will start to compress a bit over time. So we'll just have a look after a month or so. Uh, to see how this is looking, if it's still open the door about two centimeters, still touching it. If it is, it's all good. But this should be start opening up a bit, then you just wind it in a bit more. Uh, so, yeah, tits on, looks good, matches the new cross member as well, the blackness. So now that we finished installing the wheel carrier and I finally got my spare wheel back on, I want to rattle through a few of the points that make this wheel carrier special. First of which is of course the fact that it uses ORE's coating system, which is the same that is on the steering guard we installed a little while ago. And I went through in depth on the steering guard video about what makes that coating system so important and special. And I won't go through all of that in depth again, but basically it's been tested to withstand 1000 hours of direct salt spray and is basically a comparable um, coating system to what is used on tanks. So that kind of gives you an idea of the durability of this. It is going to stay looking like this for a very, 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 very long time and it won't fade, it won't peel um, or anything like that. So it is going to stay looking awesome, uh, as in O-R-E, some. Uh, that little pun that those guys like to use. Um, and what else? It uses two bearings as opposed to one, like many of the, on the market. And they're also serviceable because we have this little grease nipple down here, which means you can maintain them and keep them good for a much longer period of time. Uh, it can 
fit a whole variety of different wheel sizes. This is a pretty standard sized wheel, but if you want something bigger on there, it can also take that. It's fully adjustable. Um, no drilling or anything required to fit it. Um, it directs it directs, it, sorry, it fits directly onto a standard cross member. You just need to uh, choose when you're purchasing it, choose which um, era of Defender you have basically, uh, and you will get the right one for your vehicle. And to say a bit more about durability, the guys have spent six months uh, developing this wheel carrier and then 18 months testing it and they went through eight different designs during that time so it's not something they've rushed out to market just to be there with their fancy coating system or anything like that this is a proper bit of engineering kit and the guys at ORE they're really well they're engineers they are Land Rover lovers but they are engineers and that is why this is probably um, over engineered if anything but it means you're gonna have something which you know is gonna never let you down basically um, and that is what I really love about their products and I'm really excited to see what else is to come and on that point I'm now going to do something which I think is more likely to damage me than the wheel carrier itself Now, this isn't something I came up with myself. It was actually the guys at ORE that told me to do this. So they probably have quite a lot of faith in their product. And all of that weight is being transferred through the cross member, not the door and not this arm here, which is why I can do that without worrying. Anyway, now that I've gotten that out of the way, one more thing I wanted to touch upon is the fact that this carrier does not rattle when you drive. And that's something I was a little bit concerned about because the old carrier I had mounted to the door rattled a lot and it was a pain and it was also really annoying if I was trying to film while driving because it created a lot of annoying background noise. And the reason I was concerned about it with this is because when you open it and close it, as I will do here, you get that wobbling, but that is all absorbed by this, I don't even know if you can see it, there it is, this little rubber stop that is back here. So although it wobbles quite a lot when you close it, when driving it does not make any noise whatsoever. And I can confirm this having driven here down some dirt farm tracks which are pretty bumpy and there was no noise out of that wheel carrier whatsoever. So that is awesome to see and I'm really really glad about that. Lastly, and this is a bit of a weird thing to say, but I think it looks really cool. It's bulky, kind of utilitarian. And for me, once I've got the mud flaps back on at last, once I get some proper brackets, it really kind of completes the look of the back end of this Defender. And the back end, oh, focus is going a bit weird, sorry. The back end of the, my Defender has always been my kind of least favorite part because the cross member used to be awful. The door, it's still not great, but it used to be a lot worse um, because we, well, polished it when we installed it um, and it just looked a mess basically but now it just looks so much better with the wheel carrier the repainted spare wheel and the cross member um, and everything else down there sorted out so I just need to get the mud flaps back on they're still on the front but need to get new brackets all around get them back on the rear and I think the rear of this Defender looks so so good now and of course as well one last little shout out we have the all important ORE sticker up there on the door. So I think all that's left to do now is jump in and go for a little drive to finish up this video. Now it just so happens that the road here to get out of where I was is rather bumpy. At least the bit up here should be. So there we go, it's pretty bumpy. You can see all the wheel. The, see the wheel is moving around a little bit, but no noise, no noise whatsoever. And if I had my original wheel carrier on, I can tell you it would have been making a hell of a lot of noise right now. And this is we've got some big bumps coming up. Absolutely nothing, no noise whatsoever from the wheel carrier. And like I said, all of that weight is being transferred to the cross member, so I'm not worrying about all that jiggling about ruining my door or its hinges. 
I think that was about everything I wanted to say. What's rather amusing about ORE's products, I mean, I know we've only done two of them so far, but there's plenty more to come, um, is that they're so over-engineered that when I make these videos, I have so much that I need to explain <laughs> about their products. So, yeah, that's a downside, I guess, of the over-engineering um, of it all. But I think, like I said, I think I have covered everything because there's so much to talk about with a damn wheel carrier. It's it's that well made. Um, but yeah, if not, you can go and talk to the guys at ORE. They'd be happy to talk things, talk, explain things, and I'm sure there's plenty of info on their website and so on. I'll put a link down in the description below so where you can actually buy this product. And if you use the code TTV, as in Tearspec TV, so TTV on their website, you'll get £10 off the wheel carrier and I think an ORE bottle opener and some stickers as well. Uh, so that's a rather interesting offer. So you can go and claim that now if you would like. Uh, and I've got a steep corner here to tackle. And no rattles from my wheel carrier, isn't that nice? So, like I said, I think that's everything to cover. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hopefully you were able to take in everything I said. We'll see you in the next video.